Okay, today we're going to talk about torque wrenches, specifically inch-pound torque wrenches. This one, <laughs> do I even have to say? I've had it for a while. Look at just the case, right? It's all beat up. Here we go. It's a uh, inch-pound, goes up to 250 inch-pounds. I've used it for tightening injector uh, nuts. And I've used it for, of course, um, you know, differentials, final drives, where you have to get the rolling torque of the assembly. Uh, this one's a proto. I've had it a long time. Um, don't do a lot of, you know, final drives anymore. So it was basically doing a lot of injectors. And also, I've also got this guy right here which I bought it on Amazon. You can find it on Amazon. It's a Stark Elite 14 piece torque screwdriver set. And I bought this guy. And the reason I went to this guy is because, you know, modern trucks, modern equipment, they have plastic air cleaner, air filter housings that require 35 inches of torque on the bolts that hold the cover on. And everybody, they do the old school way, the feel that they, they can feel when it's good and tight. Well, let me tell you, uh, I've come to find out that, you know, modern engines, you have to torque it specifically to what it calls for. I'll give you one perfect example where I bought this. Uh, I bought this hose clamps. Uh, we have a lot of, especially right now going into winter, we have a lot of cold leaks. So what I do is I grab this guy, I torque it to spec, and then I pressure test. If it holds, it's good. If it doesn't hold, we're replacing the hose. Yes, I can turn it some more till it quits leaking, but the problem is it's going to split the hose or the clamp's going to strip. Or the clamp's going to strip on the customer when they're going down the road and then you got a bigger mess. So... Also on the injectors, uh, now these days everything's electric. Most of them you have to torque down. I know Cummins you do. I know the the, the the old cats you have to also, except for the C13. They're that four wire push in. But um, inch pound torque wrench. Um, you know if you're in the in the diesels and stuff, and you've been doing it, would like to call a flat rate. You just feel it, you know, till you snug it down and you call it good. We've had injectors come loose and start misfiring because they under tighten. And we've had injectors go to misfiring because they over tighten, stretch the top of the little boat. And then they let go uh, through thermal cycling. And it, all it is is they over torqued it, plain and simple. Uh, same thing where we see a lot of this now these days is also on ECM connectors. Uh, they... They go, you know, torqued in. You know, you, 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 if you use an Allen wrench or whatever it has, it has a torque to, for your P1, your P2, they go torque. That's why some newer engines, they're going to that latch mechanism that if it's too cold or if it's been a while since you got it off, you're probably going to break the latch and you got to repin the whole darn P1 or P2 because that stupid latch bar system is you know, breaking or the unit's extremely old, they get brittle. That's why they went to those because people were not torquing, they were over tightening or, you know, like on, on some of the cats, they round out the, the, the screw and then you have a heck of a time getting it apart. So, uh, message here, torque, if it calls for it, use it. Don't be like the flat rate guys. Impact everything, call it good, only to find out that it was over or under. Uh, I'll give you another example of where torque wrenches, uh, I use them a lot. DPFs. And uh, somebody will say, oh, they already replaced the DPF. And I'm like, okay. So I'll put the torque wrench on it and I'll set it to 20, 25 foot pounds. And I'll go tighten the V clamp. And guess what? I'll give it between 5 to 15 turns before that thing will torque. And then, you know, we, you know, again, that's heat escaping. I did a video where Redline uh, found a, um, a pipe that was out of alignment 
And what it was, um, it was an assembly error, but because people flat rate, I'm going to blame flat rate because I've seen it more on flat rate than hourly. Hourly, their philosophy is you get paid to do it right once. You definitely can't do it twice because, you know, the second time we're doing it for free. So they actually encourage you to slow down, do it by the book, use a torque wrench, whatever tool it calls for, that's what you use. Uh, flat rate, gun and run, gun and run and get that flat rate. Anyway, that's a different topic, but I thought I'd show y'all something that I think um, everybody should have, especially if you're a big diesel guy. This guy, pretty expensive. This guy, uh, you know, they vary in price. Um, you know, you go on Amazon, you can find them pretty cheap. This one's been pretty reliable, like I said. Right now, it's doing injectors, air filter housings, ECM connectors, um, you know, and I use it. That way, when I leave that unit, if someone calls and says, oh, he stripped it out, I'm going to be like, no, I didn't. When I was there on whatever day, I used this tool at this torque spec, and I torqued it. And then what I usually do is I'll turn around and tell that guy, how do you torque it? And normally, guess what? These guys, they don't have one of these or one of these. So they're just going by feel. So they burn themselves. Um, you know, I know... Sometimes buying tools is like an endless thing, right? You're always buying a tool. You buy, you start working on certain equipment and you buy a tool for it and you use it for two, three, four, five years and then that equipment goes away and then this thing it just starts sitting in your toolbox. But I'm going to give you a word of advice. Don't ever sell specialty tools. You might go through a dry spell for four or five years where you hardly use them. And then all of a sudden, a new product will come out where these tools are back in use again. So um, that's a, just a little tip from a guy who's been around the block a few moons. Uh, tools, you know, especially specialty tools, seems like you stop using them and you never think you'll use them again. Then a few years later, somebody will engineer something where a special tool is required again. Anyway, like, subscribe, uh, leave comment. Uh, and I'll keep them coming.